Good evening. Welcome to the Driehaus Bungalow Award Show. My name is Christine Daly, Chicago Bungalow Association board member, real estate broker, and part of the Driehaus Bungalow Awards judges panel. This year marks the 18th annual Driehaus Bungalow Awards, one of the Chicago Bungalow Association's most engaging programs. We like to call it the Oscars of the Chicago Bungalow Home Improvement. The awards were created in 2005 with the generous support of the Driehaus Foundation. Tonight, we remember Richard H. Driehaus, a longtime friend and supporter of the Chicago Bungalow Association. Richard grew up in a bungalow on 92nd and Elizabeth and Brainerd on the southwest side of Chicago. He personally knew the value that these homes bring to both families and neighborhoods. It is thanks to Richard that we have this annual tradition which has honored and awarded so many of our members for the love and care that they put into their homes and will continue to do so for years to come. A record-breaking 100 nominations came in this year. I was honored to be one of the six judges on the panel. It was amazing to see homeowners' hard work and commitment to preserving, maintaining, and adapting historic Chicago bungalows. When selecting the winners and honorable mentions in each of the seven categories, we kept in mind the spirit of the awards to highlight attainable projects that maintain the integrity of the Chicago bungalow and those that would inspire other bungalow owners across the city. Now let's get started. If you made this evening's signature cocktail, the bungalow brick, join me in a toast. Congratulations to our 14 awardees. The winners in exterior rehabilitation are John and Kathleen Daly. John and Kathleen's front porch was crumbling. They carefully deconstructed the brick wing walls, saving and cleaning the original bricks for a mason to put back together. With the help of friends, new concrete steps were poured. Now the historic entryway looks good as new. I'm Kathleen Daly. I'm John Daly. And we're in the Beverly neighborhood of Chicago. The house turned 100 years old this year. The brickwork had started to deteriorate on the stairs going up. Two of the stairs had collapsed. There was a large crack in the landing up by the front door. So for the last four years or so, we've doctored it up a yeah. little bit. We did kind of camouflage it at Christmas time, in the summertime, at Halloween time, with flowers and decorations and things so the poor mailman didn't injure himself giving our mail every day. It, it was on our radar, but uh, as the funds presented themselves, that's when we did it. The process was with the brick. I demolished the pier, the brick pier, and I took all the brick, and over the course of three nights with a, uh, a grinder, I cleaned off all the mortar off the original brick so that the brick could be reused. I had a tuck pointer come in along with the brick layer, so the combination of the tuck pointer who could had the eye for the original color of the, of the mortar and the brick layer, they were able to rebuild it. They used the original sills. The original coal room is down below the porch. Once the porch was demolished, there's nothing between the basement and the, the, the porch itself. So I built a canopy underneath it so that uh, it would support everything as it was demolished. And then it, that canopy also served as a, a structural framing so when the concrete was poured, there was something that caught it. It really has added so much more to the to the house. I mean, I didn't realize how decrepit our stairs were until I looked at the picture that I'd sent in before and after, and I thought, of course, we had flowers on the side that really looked nice, but it was camouflaged in the little hole that was on the porch. So it just looks so much nicer, and so many people have commented on how, how nice our front porch is. It just adds beauty to the house. Plus, the mailman appreciates the fact he doesn't have to <laughs> climb over obstacles now. The winners in interior rehabilitation are Robin Lestina Sikanik and Bill Sikanik. Robin and Bill's kitchen barely had counter space or storage except for a pantry. With the invaluable help of family friend Luke Daigle, they redesigned the kitchen within the existing footprint to be the functional and beautiful kitchen they always wanted. My name is Robin Lestina Sikanik with a hyphen and uh, my husband Bill and I have lived in this house for 42 years. We moved in in 1980. 
We bought it from his mother. His family lived here since the 40s. The kitchen before was a disaster. It was the ugliest kitchen in the world. Many years ago, I actually entered a contest that a company had for the ugliest kitchen, and I came in second, and my mother said, how in the world is there another kitchen that's uglier than yours? It was, it was bad. There are also seven openings in this room between doors, arches, and windows. So it was always a very difficult spot to even think about how we would change it. All sorts of limitations. Our windows are the typical low windows in a bungalow. Um, so that knocked that wall out. And like I said, with all the other doors and openings, it was, it was tough. The project was in the planning stages for a long, 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 long time. When we finally got to the point where we wanted to hire somebody, had a family friend who worked for us. He did a lot of the planning, a lot of the just figuring out dimensions and things and making sure that what I wanted would fit in certain cabinets. Uh, worked with me all the time on just choosing things that would fit well, along with the designer after we had chosen the company to do it. And it was, it was a process. I mean, it took a while. I can't tell you how many times we stand here and say, oh, I love this kitchen, I love it. Uh, it's fun to cook for the first time in my life because I have everything within an arm's length. Um, I have a dishwasher for the first time in my entire life, so that was pretty cool. I have a microwave drawer in an island, which I absolutely love. It's my, one of my favorite items. And I have something called toe kick drawers which we seem to have baffled the world with those, but it's, as you can imagine, it's where um, the toe kick on your cabinets are. So you just pull them out and you can store all sorts of flat things in there. So I have five of those. And then I also have an outlet in this island, in my island, that is um, on an angle. It looks like a pyramid and fits up under the counter. So you don't see it. I never liked islands that had the big outlets just smack in the side of an island. So this is hidden, and uh, I think those are my three favorite, absolute favorite things about the kitchen. This kitchen is um, came to be because of um, a small inheritance from my mom, and uh, she is has a place of honor in the kitchen. There's a big picture of her, and so I think about her a lot when I'm out here. She was a great cook, and uh, she'd love, she would have loved this. The honorable mentions in interior rehabilitation are Josh and Rebecca Anderson. Josh and Rebecca's bathroom was stuck in the 80s with outdated plumbing and electrical. Doing much of the work themselves, they made repairs and added creative storage solutions. Now they have a functional bathroom in keeping with the character of their home. I'm Rebecca Anderson. And I'm Josh Anderson, and we live in Norwood Park, and we've lived here four years. Before this project, our bathroom was pretty dated. It was very dark. There was a lot of pink and seashells in it. And it just had not been updated in a long time. It was kind of grimy and a little bit gross. And, <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> and it kind of lacked the character of our house. Our house is from 1925. And uh, this was very 80s. And they had saved almost nothing except the bathtub uh, from the original bathroom. We kind of had a blank slate because almost nothing could be saved and there was a lot of tile on the walls I had to remove which damaged the plaster so we pretty much had to start from scratch so we were able to redo the plumbing and electrical behind the walls, add tile that we thought was period appropriate and Rebecca kind of did most of the design work. We wanted it to kind of fit with the house and the age of the house but I, I kind of like colorful fun things so we wanted to make it fun also. We put green accents in the tile to kind of go with the wallpaper. Wallpaper can be changed. Uh, the tile, I think, is kind of timeless and should, should be able to last for Hopefully you know, time. another hundred years <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> yeah, we debated going with like a more colorful tile, but it kind of just seemed like the black and white was more timeless. But we're happy with how it, it ended up, and I think oh. with the black and white, it'll last forever, hopefully. Mm -hmm. We have a lack of storage because of the pedestal sink. Um, and when I was, you know, the walls were open down to the studs, uh, we had an open 
cavity between two studs that I was able to custom build a cabinet into and then fit a door that we ordered to match our other doors in the house. So that, that's a really nice feature for storage. Then we added a medicine cabinet too, which we didn't have before. Right. It's kind of weird. It's kind of like my favorite place right now in the house because <laughs> it's just what we wanted. Like we didn't really have to make too many compromises. It's, it's peaceful and it's a calm space. So it's a nice, relaxing room. The winner in interior restoration is Irma Negron. Irma's dining room floor was covered in old carpeting and the original plaster ceiling was falling down. With the help of her daughter Sandra, the wood floors were uncovered and refinished and the plaster ceiling was repaired. Yes, uh, my name is Irma Negron. Um, I'm living here since 1987. The problem was that this was falling down, and then we, uh, we just decided to do, we were forced to do it because the ceiling was bad. Yes, other than my daughter, she started taking out this rug, and, and she said, oh, the wood is really good. Sandra, yeah, she started doing, like, taking out some layers. So Sandra, Sandra helped with that, too. And this company he did all the floor and, so that's, all, that's, all, that's it. It looks so pretty. <laughs> it looks so pretty. The honorable mention in interior restoration is Morgan Richardson. When Morgan moved into her bungalow, the floors in the living room, dining room, and kitchen were covered in old carpet, layers of linoleum, and cigarette smoke damage. She uncovered the original wood floors and had them restored to give the home a fresh start. My name is Morgan Richardson. I've lived here since September of 2020, and we are located in the East Side neighborhood. When I moved in, the floor was covered in carpet, probably about 20, 30 years old, and just really kind of stale looking. And I love hardwood floor, so I knew that I wanted to just take up the carpet. So I began the process and it was a little bit lengthy, but worth it. I pulled it up, it was pretty dusty. Um, and I didn't realize how many staples were in carpet um, until I started pulling it up. So after I did as much as I could do on my own, I hired a family team to come and do restoration and sanding and then staining the hardwood. Um, and then in the kitchen, there were about five layers of subfloor and linoleum and things like that. So the kitchen was a lot more work, but um, just kind of prying it up piece by piece. Um, and the floor finishers did a really excellent job. I love that hardwood floor to me, like early 1900s architecture, is just very enchanting. Like when I walk into the space, I feel inspired and uplifted. Like it's very light, very airy. And I just love that about it. It's very connected to history, um, to people who lived here in the past. And it just makes me feel connected to the past and inspired in my own life. I wanted something dreamy, enchanting, just very clean and uplifting. That's how I feel when I enter the space. The winners in small project are Kingsley Weaver and Andrew Kepper. Kingsley and Andrew's roof soffit had peeling paint and parts of it were cracked and falling down. Wanting to preserve their original 1920s beadboard soffit, they hired painters to make the repairs and give it a fresh coat of paint. So my name is Kingsley Weaver. I've lived here about 15 years and we live in Hermosa. We had some work done on our attic soon after we moved in where we had foam insulation blown in and it caused our soffits to expand and made a hole in the soffits um, and we've been living with that for several years. We also had three layers on our roof and our gutters were steel but the paint was peeling. All three of these things combined we knew that it was a maintenance that we would eventually have to do and we finally got around to doing it. <laughs> 
When we decided to do the project, we wanted to save the soffits because they hadn't been covered up by aluminum and the beadboard was still there, but we knew that they required some maintenance. And so we found painters who would also do woodworking and be able to fix them. And then we wanted the colors to coordinate with other parts of the house. So I found painters who would work on the soffits. There were a couple of places where the wood was damaged, but then just in general, the paint needed to completely be redone. It was a pretty quick project. It only took a few days for them to come out and do everything. I feel like our house is a little more put together. Repairing the soffits is going to increase their longevity, but then also the fact that we've done the roof and the gutters, like the whole piece, it ties together very well, and um, it's just gonna keep having our bungalow look beautiful for years to come. The honorable mentions in Small Project are Sarah Lentz and Michael Pfeiffer. Sarah and Michael knew their enclosed back porch had potential. They removed a drop ceiling and paneled walls to uncover original features like a transom window and exposed brick. The addition of insulation and a salvage built-in for storage made for a cozy extension of the kitchen. My name's Sarah. My name's Michael. And we live in the Calvin Park neighborhood. We've been here about a year. Um, when we bought the back porch, it was just sort of like a catch-all room. It was paneled walls, linoleum floors, uh, there was a drop ceiling, and it was just sort of a room off the kitchen that just kept collecting our stuff. And we definitely wanted to make it more functional and have another space to eat and work and all that. So that was the intention when we set out to do the room. It's just to make it more livable and more of an extension of the way we live our lives. Ultimately, we wanted to make it energy efficient. Um, it was the first winter we stayed here was completely freezing if the door wasn't shut. The whole kitchen was basically off limits. Yeah. And the ceiling too, the ceiling was fully dropped. So we insulated it, new door, we updated the electric. It was all old Romex, old wiring. We updated it, electric everywhere. We run a supper club together, it's called Drumlin Supper Club. And we host cooking classes, different dinners, course out meals, and we just love to cook and host. Having this space for those events and the storage for a lot of our stuff was super important for us. We found this old built-in for $100 on an architectural salvage Facebook page and I was like, we need to go get that. We added in a new top and then we built a custom cabinet on the side to make it look like one cohesive unit. I think one classic issues of bungalows is the storage space and the closet space and so we wanted to make more storage but not have it be just like a storage room. We wanted it to be thoughtfully designed storage that added to the space. And then everything else was pretty simple decisions. We went with a simple hex tile to try to keep it in line with the era of the house. And we left the brick exposed because we thought that was a nice feature. I like being able to wake up in the morning and like the whole place is just beaming with sunlight. You get that the majority of the day. It's, it's an extra space to have coffee or have like a date night. Yeah, we, yeah. Like, <laughs> we like pretend we're at a restaurant. Yeah. It's like a nice space to have dinner, just the two of us. But working here in the morning and like having, like he said, having coffee, it's, it's just so bright and sunny and it brings so much light into the kitchen, which is really nice. The winners in Green Project are Andy and Liz Graham. Andy and Liz installed an interior drain tile system to address water seepage issues in their basement. They added a full bathroom with energy efficient upgrades such as a tankless water heater and dual flush toilet, and made other green choices including using a reclaimed door. I'm Liz. I live here with my husband Andy and my daughter Tabitha and my dog Bagel, and we've lived here since 2016. We live in Ravenswood Manor. Our basement was completely unfinished and we decided we needed a second bathroom. We had a baby on the way and we thought a second bathroom would be nice so the basement is where we decided to build it out. The first step was figuring out the water situation. A lot of times when it rained, we did get water. So we had the drain tile done around the entire perimeter of the basement, which was a big project. Once the drain tile was done, we thought now is time, it's safe to put a bathroom down here. We knew we wanted it to look authentic to our bungalow, but also be more modern and minimalist. So we opted for black and white hex tile on the floor the cabinet doors, the double vanity, 
a little toilet paper built in that my husband made, and of course, our reclaimed door. The reclaimed door is probably my favorite feature of the bathroom. It's very green because it's a salvaged door. Supposedly it's from the 40s. My husband had to strip it and sand it and refinish it, and then he added film and the WC lettering, and he turned it into a sliding door with some hardware in it. It is one of our favorite features, and I mean, aside from his labor, which happened to be free, it was less than $100. When we set out to design the bathroom, we weren't necessarily thinking about making it green. We were just thinking about making smart choices. So that included the dual flush toilet, the tankless hot water heater, there's a towel warmer. When the radiators are on, the towel warmer is on, but it keeps the towels warm, dries them quickly so they stay fresh longer so you don't have to wash them and dry them as often, which saves on laundry costs. The floor is actually heated as well, which is a really efficient way to heat the room. Another option, which is maybe not glamorous, is that we decided to keep the cast iron pipes in the basement. There was an option to lift them up into a soffit. They would have replaced them with PVC. The world doesn't need more PVC. And we decided that the cast iron, even though it's a little lower than maybe we would have liked, it's part of the basement. It's still a basement. It feels really nice and bright in there, and they're original to the house, so that was a special that we kept it. Our bathroom is the nicest room <laughs> in our house. The honorable mention in Green Project is Yunus Mina Escobar. Yunus's backyard would flood when it rained because water was not able to drain through the concrete and brick walkways. She installed a more permeable walkway made of sand, rocks, and reclaimed pavers with drainage pipes underneath directing rainwater to the flower beds. Hi, my name is Eunice Mina Escobar. I have been living in here since 1994. I love my, my home and my neighborhood. You know, I love spending time in my backyard. When we bought the house, the backyard was with brick, and it's beautiful antique brick. But for some reason, on the sideway where we're coming into the backyard, the water was not filtering anymore. So I have huge puddles in my backyard in the sidewalk. When it rained hard, I couldn't come out of the backyard to the side. It was getting frustrating and got to the point where I needed to do something. Not even Googling it or anything, researching. We thought that if we built a drainage under the garden and it would work, you know, to take the water out, but we still uh, put an exit to the alley. We decided, okay, let's just get some uh, stone racks and put it in there. In spring, it rained a lot this year, a lot, and there was no water, you know, in there. And I said, you know what, this is an amazing solution. No more water in my backyard. I still go out when it rains very hard and I just get so amazed how much it filters the water. But I also noticed that the garden, you know what I mean, doesn't need that much water anymore. My rows and my trees, uh, they're beautiful. And I don't have to water them as much as I used to. So it served it to purpose because we're recycling the water and, and sending it to the, to the garden but also I don't have the problem that I had before. The winners in landscape design are Gershon and Sandra Ben Israel. The grass in Gershon and Sandra's backyard wasn't able to grow because of shade and roots from a large tree. They reimagined their backyard around the tree installing a floating deck and a gravel fire pit area for a comfortable, low-maintenance, outdoor living space. Sandra Ben Israel and Gershon Ben Israel, and we've been here for 20 years. Over 20 years. Okay, over 20 years. Mm -hmm. As you can see, we have this gigantic tree in the backyard. So the tree was a problem with us getting grass in certain areas. And for years, we bought sod or seed every year. We're looking at different pictures and stuff, and we always wanted a floating deck. So this was our year, and we just decided to combine it all together. 
we thought about concrete, yeah. but we yeah. kind of natural. So we figured the wood, the gravel, and the grass suits us fine. Yeah. That table and chairs where we have breakfast sometimes. The gazebo is the spot. That's like the chill out room. Yeah. That's a chill room. Every evening yeah. that it's warm, we're out there with yeah. our music yeah. and our glass of water. We also uh, stepped as well. That was a good thing for the deck. Yeah, the dance so floor. Dance floor. Yeah. yeah. When the grandkids, it's just nice. It's just beautiful. I just like to sit out here. Some days we just sit on the porch and look out here. Well, this is my wife's idea back here. She has a very inventive mind. So her thing was that she wanted some rocks back here. The wrap around around the tree was easy. She came up with that idea. So we just put a little rub around the tree, section off that tree. So the tree has its own section. And this is nice. This was the easy part. But yeah, but it's her idea. So yeah. yeah. No, I got to give all credit to her. She's and a, he's a hard worker. Yeah. 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 She taskmaster. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, was a, it was a team. Yeah. Team effort. Right, yeah. right, right. Honorable mentions in landscape design are Kevin and Nadine Lloyd. The sidewalk around Kevin and Nadine's corner lot bungalow was a tripping hazard for the neighborhood, caused by tree roots. They called the city to remove the tree and pave a new sidewalk, then landscape the parkways to beautify the block even more. My name is Kevin Lloyd. I've been here about 13 years, and this is the South Chicago neighborhood. The issues were uh, mainly safety. It, it, it was just a mess. There was a large tree over here. The roots had just tore up the sidewalk, made it all uneven. It was hard to work on. I'm a person with a disability, and it was a, just a bad situation for everybody. We've got a school up on the corner. The kids walking to school, trip hazards all over. So uh, I appealed to the city to try and get the work done. First of all, had to get the tree cut down. The alderman interceded, helped me get that done. She helped me get the city to also do all the concrete work. And that was literally done back from the alley all the way up here to the corner. Driveway, sidewalk, the corner, the curbs, everything. But once that got done, then we proceeded with trying to do everything else as far as the lawn care and the gardening. When we originally moved here, in back of me were the original rocks and the little boxwoods and stuff like that. So we thought that a continuation of that throughout the property would, would just match up and it looked nice. We called our landscaper, his name was Jose, uh, J Scapes Landscaping. And um, he came out, gave us an estimate on everything. With his help, we got everything done. And it, it turned out better than we could have ever imagined. We just love everything about it. And particularly, it was the participation and encouragement that our neighbors gave us. And people would just come by and give us encouragement. And I mean, the firemen, police department, they would all see the progress. And once we got it done, it, it, looked, it looked great. We almost felt not only a self-serving type of interest because we wanted our curb appeal to look nice, but because it's a corner lot, we want to also have a little bit special to, you know, to show the neighborhood, the community. Honorable mentions in landscape design are James and Susan Ricks. James and Susan found historic wood windows from a nearby bungalow being remodeled. They repurposed the windows as sliding doors for a backyard shack they designed and built themselves added a water feature around it, and replaced the grass with pollinator gardens. My name is James Ricks. Uh, my wife is Susan. We've moved to this neighborhood 30 years ago. For, you know, 25 years, we had vegetable gardens that moved around in different places trying to see what would take. Then basically gave up on that because of squirrels and raccoons. From there, it was uh, basically just a place we would uh, play with the dogs. About 10 years ago, I had salvaged some windows, and the whole inspiration for the whole project started by revolved around these 28 windows I salvaged from a bungalow. So I designed the covered pergola, built that, that took the whole summer. After that, it was put in the first uh, pond and gardens, 
and uh, it just kept maturing from one year to the next. A big part of the inspiration for our gardens is because we're avid composters, and if anyone of you has ever composted on a regular, you realize you build up a lot of soil. So finding places to build, put that soil led to many raised gardens, and that was one thing we did hire a landscape designer to help us lay out what, number one, what plants to buy, um, and how many. Able to be out in the yard and be able to appreciate nature in the middle of Chicago is really something else. You know, adding water features, not only does it bring nature to your yard, it, you still can hear the traffic here quite a bit. Water on top of it really try to mass it out. You forget a little bit about where you're at. So when I come home, this is my space. And I'll come out here and relax and do yoga. And it's really, really enhanced my life quite a bit. My wife's as well. The winners in window restoration are Stephanie and Dave Polakowski. Stephanie and Dave's front windows were damaged and drafty. With the help of Stephanie's dad, Keith Winberg, the historic wood windows were restored, storm windows were repaired, and weather stripping was added, making them functional, beautiful, and energy efficient. I'm Stephanie Polakowski, my husband, Dave Polakowski. We've lived in Portage Park, Chicago now uh, since we bought the home in December of 2018. So when we moved in, the major issue was pink. The whole house was Pepto-Abysmal pink, including the windows. The windows were almost painted shut with pink. They also had some cracks in the window panes because as you can see, there's six panels to the windows and they're very fragile windows. So we initially saw the cracks, we saw the pink, and they were also very covered in drapery. So there was like a huge wooden panel over the windows and they didn't seem weatherproof to us. We both fell in love with the way these windows open out, especially in the summer, the breeze comes through and we just decided we couldn't part with them. So we decided time to take on the project. We had to start taking the sill part, there's six of them, we decided to take those down one at a time and my father, Keith Winberg, very instrumental in this whole process, he suggested adding weather stripping and that has helped tremendously with the wind. Then realized we needed to update these fine details. Some of them were <laughs> decaying from the layers of like oil-based paint mm -hmm. from all the years. And some of them he he used uh, like epoxy and he kind of let it dry and then he would shape it out to look like the original detail of it. Um, he stripped them down so that I could then paint them or we decided to paint them. Same color that we want to get started on the exterior of the home. We took the original hardware down and then I painted those by hand. While this project isn't that expensive, it was very, very time consuming. So I would say like patience, willingness, and time. Those are the three things we needed. I honestly love the, the curtain rods inside of the window so that even when we have these windows open, what used to happen is when we had the hardware on the outside, when you open the window, it would be just wide open. So what we like about this is we can kind of bring this open. You're still getting some really great light too. Personally, I just love that this whole south wall is window. And I love that they open into the room. I just I, I just love the like the visual appearance of these windows. I think this is like the focal point of the entire house. The honorable mention in window restoration is Tom Vogenthaler. Tom's living room and bathroom windows were covered in layers of paint and had broken pulleys, making them non-functional. Doing much of the work himself, Tom made repairs, refinished the wood, and installed new storm windows to protect the historic art glass from the elements. My name is Tom Vogenthaler. I've lived here since 2008 and the neighborhood is Norwood Park on the northwest side of Chicago. The windows, since I bought the house, they're, they're beautiful to look at, that, but they were very fragile. The, uh, there was almost no glazing left on the exterior of the windows. All of the wood on the exterior was peeling off 
and, and in some places rotting. They were rattling, they were very in energy inefficient, but they are an integral part of a bungalow and I knew that I had to save them. So that was uh, pretty high on my priority list. Between work and life and everything else, I knew it was gonna take a long time to do. So I, I, I set a pretty good schedule for myself. Once I ripped off the storm windows, the first part was setting up a scaffold across the front of the house because I wanted to do all the glazing in place. So all of the glazing was done first outside, which allowed me then to take the windows apart. And I have a friend, he's a, a stained glass artisan, and he was able to, to show me how to do the glazing. And then once I got the windows apart, he came over and he evaluated all of me. He said actually the stained glass leading and, and channels and all of that were in, in remarkably good shape. So I didn't have to do any kind of major restoration with that, a couple little spots here and there that he helped me with. The rest of it was taking apart the, the sashes and the side panels and all of the weights had dropped over the years from the, from the cord that was the original. And then I was able to find a, an old hardware store in Chicago that sold the window chain and I replaced all of the cords with chains and all the windows are working again. And some places where the windows were painted shut, I had to remove enough paint so that they were able to slide back in their channels again. So it was, it was a window by window labor of love. Winter time, this room was always, you know, 10 to 20 degrees cooler than the rest of the house just because of the living room and, and the windows were so inefficient and the, and the storm windows were so inefficient. So in the process of getting all the windows finished, I, I then went out and bought new storm, triple track storm windows, which are not only going to alleviate a lot of the draft, but they're going to protect the uh, stained glass windows so that they'll be around for hopefully another 100 years to be enjoyed. I can, I can show you how easily they work now. I can show you that because I guarantee you, anybody that watches this, buildings, there are not too many windows in Chicago where these things are with one finger that these windows work. I don't think they've worked that well since, since I was born anyway. 